Good morning traders, Russell Sandy Ford here for Easy Markets, your morning market rant. Well, the Brexit story is certainly getting much closer to being the big catalyst behind the sterling that I've been predicting now for a couple of weeks uh, for us here. Now, don't buy into the negativity that we saw from no deal or firm deal being announced in that joint press conference from the EU's Juncker and Theresa May yesterday because I think the inexperienced trader will run with that and start selling sterling, but the big money end of town, uh, certainly the side I favor, is that you have to look to the commentary from Theresa May making a point that they say we are very close to our positive resolution and we will be meeting, quote unquote, by the end of this week. Now we all know that Brexit deadline is not until March 19, but for mine, this is this positioning we've been talking about for a long time on the easymarkets.com.au website. Short Euro Pound definitely looks very much interesting, more interesting, uh, and will, des I dare say, be the trade that pays this week if that plays out the way Theresa May has hinted. So straight up, the sterling against the greenback is another one that may benefit more than that 136 target that I've been talking about for a little while if we get any more political jitters and wobbles out of Team Trump's um, meddling there in the US election. But if you want to play it a little bit uh, safer, safe is a, a dubious word in this current market, but if you want to avoid the US dollar, look to some of the other pairs, for example, the Sterling Kiwi, um, big mover last week, and the Sterling Aussie showed a very bullish momentum higher last week there, taking out that 178.80 level uh, before a little wiggle and pullback on Friday's negative headlines. So again, look to the sterling crosses if you want to get a bit to uh, sterling yen, of course, I highlighted on Friday, a huge move late last week, moving 530 pips off that 46.80 low last Thursday. So look to the sterling yen um, and for that upside momentum to kick in again if we see that Brexit story unfold the way I think it will. Now, an interesting comment here about the US dollar. I noticed the 10-year yields were just mildly lower, nothing to, to get your heart rate moving too much, but the two-year yields did blip higher quite a little bit last night. Now, in English, what this means, to get rid of all the jargon, it means the shorter-term bond market um, market makers and they're very often correct about that US dollar fair value, are pricing that over the next two years that US dollar will firm up. Now, I'm not trying to sell the idea of two years in terms of the outlook for the US dollar, but certainly the next year, 2018 as a calendar year, should see that forward guidance and rate hike path play out. Where can we see that really come through is in perhaps the commodity currencies such as the Aussie here. Remember traders as well, the RBA is out at 2.30 today expected to sit on their hands again and hold up the Australian cash rate. So the Aussie dollar is another target if the RBA start talking about concerns about Australia's property debt and property bubble in Sydney and Melbourne. That will have a negative flow straight away and the Aussie will be offered pretty quickly under that 76 handle. Um, don't forget the Kiwi as well. The RBNZ Spencer speaks in about an hour and a half. Uh, purely in relation to inflation and how that will affect the monetary policy there for New Zealand. So don't be afraid to get into positions for the Kiwi because I do expect some negative sentiment to drag that Kiwi dollar back under 68. Now, where are the other opportunities? Today shouldn't be a great deal apart from the Asian session. Uh, I do notice Dolly Yen had a very soft start to the week despite the US tax plan swirling around. Now this does actually make a bit of sense because we're still not clear on how this will flow through to GDP growth. There's a lot of mixed projections in that regard. Uh, and at the same token, the S&P 500 came back a solid 25 odd points to end that US session. So I would expect the bargain hunters might come back in long on dolly yen today now that it's done a reset at 112 and a half. So for mine, that could be the trade in Asia, apart from, of course, trading around the event risk for the Kiwi speech and the RBA later today. So look to dollar yen, as always, as a big mover to play out the risk theme using the US dollar. If you guys need a hand with anything, whether it be Bitcoin indices, all of your commodities and metals, 
or of course your FX trading, by all means, just come through to us here at the Easy Markets Dealing Desk.